Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from the Balkans here in beautiful Budapest. I hope everybody has had a great week, is staying healthy and strong, keeping your immune systems in good shape with lots of vitamin C and exercise. Hi, Beck Jun. Welcome, members. This is a members chat class. To become a member of our channel, just click the join button beside the subscribe button. And of course, everybody is welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class where everybody can join the chat in about 90 minutes. That will be for task one, and it will be a bar chart. Hi, Michael Fan. While we wait for a few more of our members, uh, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS success, check us out there. Join our premium package for general IELTS. Visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have loads and loads of materials for you. Uh, this is our academic web portal here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join and get your My Student account. And for the general version, uh, it's gialtshelp.com, green background. You can click that big red button to join there. Lots of members joining in now. Hi, Rajveer. Hi, Musafir. New member, Leah Shmulevich, just joined. Welcome, Leah. Uh, Leah, send me an email and I'll hook you up with those exclusive videos, okay? Uh, if anybody has questions about our products or the IELTS, send me an email. Leah, definitely send me an email. My email address is adrian at aehelp.com. All right, Leah. Hi, Maksud. Hi, Rashika, Dr. Krishna. Nice to have you all. Okay, students, so uh, today we're finishing that task two uh, that we started yesterday. I hope everyone had a chance to complete the introductory paragraph because that's where we're continuing from. Uh, if you missed yesterday's class, no problem. We'll review the task two question. We'll go over the introduction and then we'll get right into the body paragraph writing. There's Leah. Hi, Leah. All right. So uh, tomorrow we'll have a Q&A session for members and then another new reading passage for everyone. Okay, here is uh, the uh, task two question that we started on yesterday. Uh, this was uh, a question that appeared in a previous IELTS exam. So it's taken out of an official test in the past. Uh, here's the question. Let's just read it again. Make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, IELTS task two writing. You should spend 40 minutes on this task. In some countries, an increasing number of people are suffering from health problems as a result of eating too much fast food. It is therefore necessary for governments to impose a higher tax on this kind of food. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this opinion? So topic is fast food. More specifically, the topic is tax imposed on fast food and the controlling idea is why we would do that. So why would we impose a tax on fast foods and do we agree with this idea? So the logic of uh, creating additional taxes, maybe some of you remember, I called that a surcharge of sorts. Okay, um, and then we got into some good planning, talking about the topic the controlling idea. Students always take a couple of minutes to plan your essay before you begin writing. Okay. All right. Um, Ashraf, I see your question. Uh, there's not, so the live classes are Wednesday to Saturday. Okay. Um, Wednesday to Saturday. And uh, the ones for members, Ashraf, are uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So Wednesday's class is an all chat class. Okay. Um, so Turk very cleverly, uh, yesterday Turk said, well, it's kind of like, uh, taxes for cigarettes and alcohol. And Turk was right. It's actually called a repricing tax. So, uh, repricing taxes are used by governments for products that are called socially irresponsible products. So products that uh, don't really benefit society, but create harm 
uh, such as cigarettes and alcohol. And uh, these days, of course, there's a lot of debate for creating these kinds of taxes for uh, fast food as well as sugar, different kinds of sugar. It's causing a lot of problems. Okay, uh, so we came up with a couple clever ideas here of why the government would do that. One was to discourage people from eating a lot of fast food. Uh, one of our members said, oh, that's saying to dissuade, dissuade. Uh, think about the word persuade. Persuade is when you want to convince somebody to do an action, uh, like this task two essay is a persuasive essay. And the prefix di or dis is the negative. So here, instead of persuade, it's dissuade. Okay, that'll help you remember that new vocab. Um, minimize environmental damage. I think that was Abhishek, uh, and that's right. Uh, but again, we decided not to talk about that because it's just too much information for IELTS. So um, the other one was to have money to pay the additional cost created in the healthcare system. Okay, so we chose a side here. This was definitely a strongly agree. Uh, students, be really, really careful. This is a reminder to all of our viewers, when you have a question, uh, to what extent do you agree or disagree? In many cases, you should not partially agree. Okay, is everybody clear on that? Members, are you clear on that? That saying I partially agree is usually a bad perspective because oftentimes it's incorrect, number one. Number two, uh, nobody really likes to uh, be wishy-washy in the middle. We like um, an opinion. We like a yes or a no. We don't like a maybe. Okay? Think about that. All right? So I'm just going to make a quick note of that just to really emphasize and drive that point home for everybody. Okay? Because unfortunately, a lot of um, materials online and in other places, they've taught students to partially agree. I don't know why anybody came up with that. In university, it's strongly disliked. So most professors will mark those kinds of essays and research papers very, very low, unless there's actually some truth to it. But usually a professor will say, well, choose a side. We're creating science, not a maybe. Okay. So usually, pay attention to the question, of course. Uh, it is a bad idea to write an essay or create an argument, because it's not really an argument, which states, uh, I partially agree. Just imagine that you're having a debate with one of your friends, and another one of your friends comes, and the two of you are asking, who do you think is right? Am I right, or my friend John is right? And your third friend says, well, I partially agree. I agree with you, and you, both of you will probably be like, ah, don't do that. Just agree with one of us. Okay, so I partially agree um, because oftentimes, like in this essay, uh, it's untrue. Okay, there's no real benefits to uh, fast food um, other than luxury and it's fast, but uh, it's not really a truly a benefit in the long run. So, because oftentimes it's untrue and People usually, um, or people mostly like a uh, yes or no opinion and not a maybe, okay? Partially agree is like a maybe. People don't like maybe, okay? All right. Okay, students, so uh, we had a thesis statement. That's fine. We'll see that in a moment. And then we had our introduction. Okay, um, thank you for uh, seeing that, students. So thank you for telling me that it's clear. That's good. Uh, Samuel's asking, when should we write about both sides? Um, when the question asks you, Samuel. Okay, so before I read the introduction here, uh, Samuel's asking, when should I write about both sides? Or negatives and uh, positives. Uh, the trick here, Samuel, is really pay attention to the question, okay? The answer to your question, Samuel, is when the question asks you to do so. Some IELTS questions uh, will be like, um, discuss 
the negatives and positives. Of, okay. Uh, if it's asking you for both sides, and sometimes it'll actually say discuss both sides, okay, um, or discuss both sides. Uh, so in that case, uh, you want to discuss both sides. But if it's not asking you for that, it's if it's if asking you for to choose one side, um, or if it's asking uh, to what extent do you agree. Uh, in most cases, you go with one side, you create two strong points for your argument, like in our essay, and then you go with that, okay? Yeah, exactly, Samuel. Very good. Okay, here we go, uh, students. So uh, remember, members, tomorrow will be a Q&A class. Tomorrow's a question and answer. So you can ask me all of these questions tomorrow. Let's get to some writing, okay? All right. Yeah, Abhishek, uh, negative positives, advantages, disadvantages, those are uh, synonyms, but if it's or, that's not and, right? So advantages or disadvantages is usually one side because it's not and. So be really careful with the connective word, right, um, in the question. Uh, here, it says discuss the negatives and positives. The and is very important. If I change the and for or, it's not the same question. Discuss the negatives or positives, that's one side. And positives is both sides. That's very important. Okay, This connective word is very important in the question. Okay, um, here we go. Introduction. Um, yesterday we started, we did the hook, we skipped the background, and then uh, we had, of course, the thesis. So here's the hook. Uh, fast food may seem cheap, but in fact, it is very expensive. Millions of people suffer the consequences of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease in some countries as a result of over-consuming fast food. So there is the definition and the importance of the question. And notice that my background immediately starts to clarify my hook. So fast food may seem cheap, but in fact, it is very expensive. Now, when we read this, the reader starts to realize right away what I mean by that. Okay, so clarity. Always seek to explain your ideas. Okay, millions of people suffer the consequences of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease in some countries as a result of over-consuming fast food. To mitigate, mitigate is just another fancy way to say control, to mitigate or manage. Uh, to mitigate the situation, governments implement higher taxes on this industry. Okay, so again, definition reflecting the question. And then, my thesis, I am in complete agreement that authorities impose repricing taxes on fast food as individuals should be held accountable for the costs related to their unhealthy habits and society's promotion of people's healthy living. So that's my thesis with two clear points for the body paragraphs. Now I see that some of our members also completed this assignment as I asked, so that's fantastic, and I will read it, okay? So there's definitely merit in doing your homework, okay? All right. So Samuel says, fast foods are cheap, but also expensive. The ease and taste accompanying fast foods bring along a load of health problems associated with it, costing thousands of dollars to nations, as well as its citizens' health care budget. The government has imposed a surcharge on fast food as a check to the ever-growing consumption of it. Uh, Samuel, not bad. couple of word form mistakes. You're on the right track. You're very similar. Notice, Samuel, you're very, very close to um, what I'm uh, doing here, which is great. Okay, uh, Beck John wrote, billions of dollars um, are derived from the taxation of fast food annually. Every government imposes a tax on junk food which increases its price and is paid by consumers. 
In fact, by doing so, authorities can solve health issues and keep citizens healthy. Okay, uh, Becca, on the uh, thesis, you have to work on that a little bit. Health issues and keep citizens healthy, a little bit unclear, okay? Um, I would write instead, Beck John, make sure, Beck John, that your thesis points are really clear for your reader. So what I would do, Beck John, is write it as, uh, in fact, by doing so, authorities can solve medical expenses and um, people's uh, physical condition, something like that, Beck John, would be much clearer for the reader, okay? Medical expenses for that first point, okay? Leading up to your thesis, it was good. Thesis has to be the best sentence, Beck John. Uh, Rajveer says, millions of people suffer from a plethora of health concerns such as diabetes, uh, such as type 2 diabetes and uh, cardiac arrest, just because they consume uh, junk food, which are high in calories and low in nutrition, served by prominent outlets like McDonald's. Okay, Rajveer, good. That's great. Um, watch your grammar. The order of words, Rajveer, is type 2 diabetes, not diabetes type 2, but type 2 diabetes is a little bit better. Okay, um, but good. And notice, uh, Rajveer, that you did the same um, uh, as this is Dollywall. Um, you did the same as uh, what I did. You alluded to the diseases that are caused by fast food, which uh, really emphasizes the importance of this question that's not mentioned in the task too, okay? So uh, very good, okay, very good. Okay, Begjan, I see that your thesis actually was coming later. So in this case, just remove that last sentence of the background or the last phrase of the background because you mention it in the thesis anyway. Okay. All right. Um, Rajveer Singh. Uh, millions of people suffer from type 2 diabetes and heart stroke as a consequence of eating a lot of fast food. And governments are forced to surge the taxes on such products and services to safeguard their citizens and mitigate costs. Right, Rajveer? So um, I, I think, Rajveer, also your last sentence there is kind of going into the thesis. I'm guessing you have the thesis coming after, but very nice, Rajveer, very nice writing, okay? Uh, and for type 2 diabetes, yeah, you can use the number too. It's okay, absolutely. It's denoted like that. All right, great, students, fantastic. Some really nice uh, backgrounds. Uh, if I have to say, um, I would say that the sentences you're writing, uh, Rajveer, Rajveer, Bekjan, um, they're definitely a strong 7-5 band, okay? Uh, Samuel, yours was a little bit closer to a 6-5 band just because of your word use and grammar mistakes that made the um, coherence a little bit awkward. Be really careful about coherence, okay? So, um, but definitely in the higher bands now. So looking, looking solid, students, looking really good, okay? All right, let's get to some writing. So uh, body paragraph one uh, clearly has to be uh, for point number one. Point number one is individuals should be held accountable for the costs related to their unhealthy habits, okay? So individuals should be held accountable for the costs related to their unhealthy habits. So that is the topic of body paragraph one. So uh, give me a definition of this, okay? So again, topic sentence starts the body paragraph. Uh, topic sentence comes from thesis point one. It is a deeper definition with details of this point, okay? So uh, go ahead, members, and compose a sentence uh, for me that um, makes it clear for the reader what you mean when you say that uh, people should be accountable for costs related to their unhealthy habits, okay? All right. Okay, so Beck John says, in certain countries, citizens' health care expenditures are paid from government budget 
generated from different kinds of taxation, including junk food. Very good, Beck John. Very, very nice. Okay. Um, Ashraf, I don't know if that's a problem for everybody that the screen is blurry, but for me, it looks okay. So if the screen looks blurry for anybody else, let me know. But that has to do with the stream. There's not much I can do because I'm not changing any camera settings or settings on the projector. So that has to be the stream, Ashraf. Okay. All right. Hassan Sadiq says, when government creates a strict rule to reduce the amount of junk food consumption, society has to run the wheel and follow its rule. Okay, Hassan Sadiq, I think that's kind of for the background in the introduction. It's not so much the topic sentence here. All right. Uh, Rajveer Singh says, an individual who suffers from disease as a result of over-consuming fast food must fund his hospital expenses for the cure of these ailments. Yeah. Okay, very good. So Rajveer is basically paraphrasing and saying, hey, look, if there's a person who runs up a very high medical cost, then they should be held accountable. So Rajveer and Begjan, some good thinking there, right? Um, so uh, in many countries, hospital systems are either partially or entirely funded uh, by taxpayers and citizens must be responsible for the astronomical costs that can result from an extremely unhealthy diet of daily fast food consumption. Okay, so uh, yeah, definitely taking a little bit of Bekjan, taking a little bit of Rajveer here and creating that topic sentence, right? So in many countries, hospital systems are either partially or entirely, notice that use of that correlative conjunction there, uh, funded by taxpayers and citizens must be responsible for the astronomical costs that can result from an extremely unhealthy diet of daily fast food consumption. Okay, that makes it really clear for the reader that, oh yeah, okay, we're all paying for the healthcare system. Uh, people who purposefully uh, create very expensive medical bills should be kind of pointed at and said, hey, maybe you should pay a little bit more if you choose to do that, right? Okay, very good. Okay, Sam Katnoria, nice to see your comment, says individuals should keep a checkup on a regular basis to know their health-related issues. Okay, Sam, it's not bad, a little bit general, okay? So what do you mean health-related issues? Uh, think about the topic, think about fast food here. So really get into the situation, okay? Um, IELTS, of course, as many of you know, it's a thinking exam. So it's an exam of English and it's a thinking exam, especially when you get into the band seven to nine range, not an ESL test, as I keep telling everyone. All right, Begjan wanting to move us along. Begjan says, let's get to the explanation. When individuals become ill, Due to consuming fast food excessively, they are hospitalized and treated with the help of budget derived from the uh, added taxation. Yeah, okay, Bekchan. So um, that's what follows next. So now we want to explain this, right? So give a clear and quantitative um, explanation of this topic statement, okay? Yeah, you're definitely on the right track, uh, Bekjan. Uh, try to include a bit more quantitative information and be even more specific to the question, okay? 
Ashraf says individuals who overconsume healthy foods are more prone to health issues due to that governments must impose taxes on such foods to uh, alleviate their medical costs. Yeah, Ashraf, you're almost there. Just finish that idea, okay? On such foods to alleviate. Alleviate means uh, to lighten, okay? To lessen is another way to say it. Lessen the medical burden, okay? Or decrease, okay? Alleviate, decrease. All right. Okay. That's good though. Ashraf, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice topic sentence. Okay. Uh, Samuel says treating diseases caused by eating junk food, such as type two diabetes and cardiac issues could cost a fortune, um, indirectly for the public as well as the government. Yeah. Samuel, very good. Nice. You're on the right track. That's some good writing, Samuel. Now you have some clear grammar there. You want to have that throughout. So Samuel, that's your solid seven, five, eight, eight, five writing. Okay. Rajveer Singh says to cure diseases like heart stroke and type two diabetes requires thousands of dollars to provide health healthcare support and using equip expensive equipment and talented doctors. Yeah, very good Rajveer. So that's your explanation. Absolutely. So, um, when high, uh, cholesterol, um, and sugary, uh, foods like, uh, burgers uh, create or result in a cardiac disease and uh, type 2 diabetes thousands of dollars are required for medical treatment and equipment which should also be subsidized by the individual in the way of um, additional taxes on, uh, such foods or food consumption, or let's paraphrase dietary habits, habits. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, there we go. So when high cholesterol and sugary foods like burgers result in cardiac disease and type two diabetes, thousands of dollars are required for medical treatment and equipment, which should also be subsidized by the individual in the way of additional taxes on such dietary habits, right? So that's my explanation. So clearly here I'm explaining why I agree with the idea of these taxes. So again, going back to the taxes, right? Going back to the taxes. Very good. Okay. Lots of really great answers coming up. Students, that's fantastic. Um, Abhishek says, because of fast food eating habits of people, not only thousands of people are admitted all around the world to hospitals to cure uh, diseases like diabetes and high blood pressure, but also uh, millions of dollars are spent from government reserves, which are collected through different types of uh, taxpayer resources. And then Abhishek finished the idea. So it is only fair that people with such eating habits contribute more. Okay. So this is where a lot of um, students, I'm just going to write that here in parentheses, Abhishek. So it is only fair that people who uh, choose to consume uh, an unhealthy amount of fast food uh, contribute more to these medical expenses. Okay. 
Um, students, remember what I keep telling you that um, your reader is an alien. Uh, that means you must clearly spell out your ideas and <clears throat> emphasize your connections. Okay, it's one of the most common kinds of mistakes and it's one of the um, uh, concepts that's really taught through university as well, uh, where students um, forget that um, you're not writing the essay for yourself, you're writing this for your readers, and not just one reader, but you're potentially writing this for dozens or hundreds of readers. And in fact, keep in mind, uh, viewers and members, that um, your IELTS essays uh, are often marked by two people. So two people will read your essay, and then um, each of them will give you a band score. So one will give you uh, an eight, the other one will give you a seven, so they'll take the middle 7.5. Okay, um, if there's a lot of disagreement, then they'll bring in, or a great discrepancy, they can actually bring in a third person to review the essay. And they all do it separately, so they don't know what the other person is giving for the score. This is one way that the IELTS uh, guarantees a very standard score for your writing, uh, even though there are obviously so many different styles of essays and people. Okay, so two people look at the essay, they each give a score, usually most of the time it's the same score. So examiner A or marker A will give a band 6.5, most of the time marker B will also give a 6.5 because they're trained very similarly. Sometimes there's a slight difference, so marker A will give you a 6, marker B will give you a 6.5, they'll actually take the higher score, 6.5. Okay, so they don't, you know, IELTS isn't out to get you. They don't want to, they're not jerks, okay? Um, they want you to pass, so they'll usually take the higher score if it's only a half band difference. If it's a full band difference, they'll split the difference. If it's more than a full band, they'll bring in a third person, okay? That's often how it will work, all right? Um, and if you're not satisfied with your uh, essay mark because you think you should have a better mark, then you can ask for a remark, which costs money, of course, because then they have to bring in two more um, people to read your essay. So that's why you have to pay for those remarks, because they bring in other people to reread your essay, and they will independently mark it without knowing the score. Okay, so is that clear how that works? So that's how IELTS is actually quite good at staying objective. Okay, multiple people, multiple scores, taking averages, right? That's one of the reasons the exam is so expensive because there's a lot of work in the administration part of it to keep it standardized. Hopefully that makes sense. I usually don't explain that part of the exam, but it's a good to know. Okay, um, so uh, let's see. Samuel says, so the burden of escalating costs of the healthcare system, governments... Uh, should be placed on an ever-growing consumer of junk food. Okay, all right, uh, it's a little bit confusing, Samuel. But anyway, here we go, the example now, all right? Uh, so I'm going to uh, write an example. You do the same. The example has to be real world or seem like real world, okay? It has to be real or seem real. Should be uh, kind of visual, something that we can see. And uh, it should reflect... the voice of the author. In this case, it's first person, okay? So you definitely want to have the first person voice in there. This is a first person essay, okay? Uh, Rajveer Singh says, for instance, I read in Economic Times, which stated that the Indian government had collected an additional $2 million in 2019 by hiking fast food uh, tax by 5%, and this initiative assisted to um, minimize cardiac uh, disease by 10%. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, sure. Rajvir, you can also say that uh, this $2 million uh, was used to build additional hospitals specializing in uh, diabetes and um, cardiac disease. Okay. Uh, very good. 
Uh, Samuel Sadir says, so the burden of escalating costs of the healthcare system, governments should be played. Yeah, okay, I see that. So I read that already. All right. Um, so here's my example while you're writing this up. Okay. So I read a medical uh, journal which explained that the additional um, 20 million dollars of tax revenue collected on fast food in the uh, state of California had been reinvested for um, treating cardiovascular disease. Okay, something like that, all right? So related to our explanation, okay? All right. Okay, Beck John says, for example, recently I've read an article where it was written that KFC in America actually pays 30% of its income to the government in form of tax, which is then used to cure health problems such as obesity and heart surgeries. Clearly, these problems are resulting from the consumption of too much junk food. Um, yeah, very good, Beck John. That's perfect. That's a band nine ex uh, explanation, or sorry, that's a band nine example. Very nice, Beck John. Great job. You get my. Super thumbs up. It's a fantastic example. I love it. Okay, it's very clear. That kind of writing gets you high, 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 high band scores. It's very relevant, very visual, clearly connected to the task two question. Okay. All right. Um, so now we want a connecting sentence or also called a concluding sentence. It's kind of two and one here. It's a bit of both, so it's a connecting, uh, concluding sentence. Um, here, we just reflect to our position, okay? Uh, to what degree, I strongly agree. So this is one of two reasons. Um, that I am in favor of uh, such government tax, okay, or uh, in favor of a fast food tax, okay, there, so, yeah, there you go, Beck John, very good, this is one of two reasons why I'm in favor of the given opinion, yeah, perfect, it's the same, it's clear, it's concise, and it moves you to body paragraph two seamlessly, okay, very nice, excellent, well done, okay, that's all you need to do, great, Keep it up. You're going to get a fantastic mark on your IELTS exam if you keep going this way. Very good. Um, I'd love to see some more comments from some of our other members. Uh, there's kind of a silence of a lull there. So we're getting lots of comments from Begjan, uh, Samuel, Rajveer as well. Uh, Janil, I would love to see some comments. Uh, students, it's not a competition. So the only person you're competing with here is yourself. Uh, and getting my feedback in these classes is a really good idea. So, um, okay, I went back a little bit here to see if I missed some other students. So Sam Kutnoria says, governments should hire a team of experts who monitor the data of individuals uh, regarding the types of foods they consume to minimize the health-related issues like cardiac arrest and obesity. Okay, Sam, that's a suggestion, right? Um, in this essay, we're not looking for the suggestion. Sam, uh, make sure you're clear on the task two question. If you missed that, have a look at it in the video description. Students, you can always take a look at the task two question that we're answering in the uh, video description. So here, the concept is we're in agreement with a fast food tax because it forces people to pay for their own medical expenses that they create and it dissuades people from eating junk food, okay? So definitely I wanna see some more comments from our other members that are in here. Ashraf, keep going, more comments, okay? 
We've got quite a few of you in here. All right, Abhishek, keep pushing. Michael Fan, I see you're in here as well. Hassan, I want to see more comments. Okay, practice your writing. And if we're going a bit fast, don't worry about it. I mean, if um, you know we're on the explanation and you're still writing your topic sentence, uh, that's okay. I'll jump back to that. It's okay. Well, I can shift around a little bit. It's not a. It's not a big deal. Okay. So Samuel says, this is one of two reasons why I'm in favor of governments imposing the fast food tax. Very good. Uh, Hassan Sadiq says, for this reason, I am on the side of imposing high taxes on these types of foods. Yeah, take out the why, Hassan. Very good. Okay. Um, body two topic. So body two topic is about discouraging uh, people from... Um, uh, eating these uh, foods, right? So high taxes discourage people, okay? So uh, by making the food more expensive, we are discouraging people. So give me a nice topic sentence for this, okay? Uh, Beck John says, increasing the price of fast foods uh, because of tax policy keeps the majority of people away from consuming it. Yeah, so increasing... The cost of fast food for these businesses and consumers in the way of taxation. Uh, I've used this uh, expression or this um, phrasing twice because I want to teach it to you. So in the way of means in the form of by doing this. Remember this, it's quite a useful uh, connective, so in the way of taxation, and it's followed by the noun. So increasing the cost of fast food for these businesses and consumers in the way of taxation um, by the government leads to a decrease in the number of such restaurants as well as the likelihood of uh, over consumption okay so that would be my topic sentence there okay so increasing the cost of fast food for these businesses and consumers in the way of taxation by the government leads to a decrease in the number of such restaurants as well as the likelihood of overconsumption. Uh, and of course, logically here, your reader is asking why, meaning what's your explanation? So why would that happen? Okay, so explanation follows. All right. Um, Hassan Sadiq says, when the price of fast food is a bit high, many people are not able to afford buying these foods. Yeah, uh, very good, Hassan, that topic will work. It becomes unaffordable or, yeah, inaffordable, unaffordable, unaffordable. Uh, Samuel says, apart from funding uh, health care, governments in the process dissuade people from consuming fast foods by hiking the prices to the point where they become unaffordable or less favorable, okay, uh, as part of taxation. Very good, Samuel, so you're finishing your ideas. Good. Uh, Rajveer says, hiking the cost of fast food in the way of high tariffs aids to dissuade people from overconsuming such foods in favor of other cheaper and healthier uh, diets. Okay, very good. Uh, Beck John, on to the explanation. Just rolling along, Beck John. Good for you. Uh, students, work on your uh, writing fluency, of course. You have 40 minutes for this, right? So uh, you definitely need to be fast. Beck John says, when fast food outlets um, increase product costs, most people find it difficult to pay. Thereby, they decrease the consumption of junk foods such as hamburgers and hot dogs in favor of healthier diets like vegetables and fruits. Okay, Beck John, give that contrast that I just explained there. Okay, notice how that made it sound a little bit nicer for the reader. 
right? So uh, when the cost of a hamburger becomes equatable to that of a nutritious tuna salad, it is more likely that people uh, or consumers, uh, people, uh, opt for the more tasty, let's believe, let's not argue that the tuna salad is less tasty. If you try my tuna salad, you will agree that it's tastier than a hamburger. Um, so it is more likely that people will opt for the more tasty and nutritious uh, salad. Okay. All right. Um, still an explanation, so not quite an example just yet. There's no personal first-person uh, voice here, all right? Uh, Samuel says, when the price of high-demand fast food, such as burgers and pizzas, increase, people think twice while paying for them and opt for more tasty as well as healthy salads. Yeah, very good, Samuel. Uh, great. So you're on par with me. Nice. Uh, you have very synonymous thinking with me today, Samuel. That's great. Leah, great. Okay, good. I want to see variety students. So raising the food tax can make people pay attention to other meals. I would recommend uh, the same uh, lowering the price of healthy foods. Okay, Leah, you're bringing your own opinion into the essay about lowering the price of healthy foods. That is a different argument. That's a different idea. That doesn't belong, although you're correct, I agree with you, Leah, we want to increase the price of unhealthy foods, decrease the price of healthy foods, but we don't have uh, space for that information in this essay. So we have to stick with taxing the unhealthy food and how that helps, okay? Uh, in one way, Leah, by increasing the cost of unhealthy foods like fast foods, we are in some sense, relatively speaking, decreasing the cost of healthy foods quote unquote, okay? But you're on the right track. Just be careful, students. Um, be careful not to bring your own heartfelt opinion into the essay, which is off topic, especially in the academic uh, aisles, because that will lower your score, okay? All right, Hassan says, after imposing high taxes on junk food, a uh, sandwich from McDonald's can cost $30 or more. So many people, including myself, opt to choose another healthy plate of salad, which costs $10. Beautiful quantitative writing, Hassan. I love it. And it really drives the point home. So notice students how Hassan said, hey, let's take this one step further. Um, let's, uh, let's say uh, becomes expensive, right? So when the cost of a hamburger becomes equatable to that of a nutritious tuna salad, such as $20, uh, why not put that in there, that quantitative information? It is more likely that people opt for the most, more tasty and nutritious salad. Right you are, and that really drives the point home. So that's one of the reasons you should really focus on quantitative information, that means numbers, in your speaking and writing because it makes communication stronger, okay? Ashraf, nice use of expression. Ashraf says, hiking the cost of fast food by the government leads to less consumption by society uh, and uh, maintains better health for citizens. Nice. Okay, now we're getting a good variety. Maksud, therefore, it is essential to put taxes on junk food as it leads to not only a healthier life, but also a prosperous life. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more explanation that we can uh, state here as well. Uh, but instead, what we want is an example. And uh, then we want a conclusion. But that's all the time, uh, students, I have for this class. I don't want to rush the example and the conclusion. Uh, what I really wanted was 
for you to just get that fluency going. But I can, and I can see that a lot of you are really rocking and rolling right now, which is great. In 30 minutes, I'm going to do a task one uh, bar chart uh, class. So you have 30 minutes right now. All of the members who are getting really chatty, which is what I love, okay? Maksud, Bekjan, Samuel, Leah, fantastic. Rajveer, Hassan, good. Uh, keep going. So when I finish this class, finish the uh, body paragraph, finish the conclusion, do it right now. It should only take you about 10 minutes, okay? And you'll still have 10, 15 minutes to rest before the next class. So finish this uh, task two in the next 10, 15 minutes, take a few minutes rest, and then hopefully I will see you back for um, the task one class, which was a request by one of our members this uh, horizontal bar chart that we'll have. Um, and for all of our viewers, check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS, lots of task two examples and help for writing as well as editing on our websites. Try those out, okay? Uh, I will also finish this task two essay members and I will post it as usual on our YouTube community uh, post. So you'll be able to see it there, okay? Um, there's no WhatsApp group, Samuel. That would be too much management on our end, and it's too difficult to do. Uh, so no uh, WhatsApp group from my end. But if somebody wants to create a WhatsApp group and invite other members, um, sure, that's, that might be a good idea. Okay, everyone, uh, see you in 30 minutes for some Task 1 fun. Yay! <laughs> All right, bye for now. See you shortly.